My name is Cade Courtley, and this is Can You Survive This Podcast. The show is designed to teach you techniques that will increase your chances of survival if you happen to find yourself or your family in any life-threatening disaster scenario imaginable. Each episode will put you smack in the middle of a new disaster scenario as I challenge my guests to see if they have what it takes to get out alive. Knowledge is power, people. Can you survive this podcast? Hello, my fellow survivors. If you hear my voice, then you are still alive, and it continues to be my mission to keep it that way. I'm Kay Corley, and welcome to another episode of Can You Survive This Podcast. We have an amazing guest for you today, the female Indiana Jones, the uh, Oprah of adventure. She's a filmmaker, she's an adventurist, and she is here with us today. She's also an author and a filmmaker, which I can't wait to get into. So, uh, folks, please welcome Allison Till. Allison, welcome to the show. Aloha. <laughs> this is coconut coconut Wi-Fi here, so hopefully this this all goes as planned. Can you hear the birds? There. It's very authentic, and uh, basically anybody watching right now is incredibly jealous, especially if they're sitting in their home waiting for this pandemic to move on. So, I, I can see you're handling it perfectly. <laughs> hey, Allison, we do something on this show called. Hypothetical survival world. Uh oh. Now you've lived the ultimate hypothetical survival world with cameras, but we're going to do it again and you don't have to take your clothes off. Oh, sweet. So okay. here's how it works basically, there are going to be 10 situations that come okay. up, and you can choose option A or option B. And if you choose what we consider in this hypothetical world, granted, the correct option, you get 10 points. If you choose the wrong option, minus 10 for a grand total of 100 points for a perfect score, which should be easy for somebody with your background. And oh. obviously, uh, we, you could be the new summa cum laude graduate of hypothetical survival world. Dun, dun, so dun. Do, you want, do you want to play? Do I get a theme song? Dun, dun, oh, we'll, dun, dun. We'll, we'll throw one in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll throw, we'll throw some theme music on. Oh God, no pressure, okay. No, okay. not at all. Uh, now granted, again, with all your experience, Arguably, and if you want to, you can argue, no, I still think this is the right way to do it, but it is still also a game, and there has to be one choice that's better than the other. So here, Allison, here is your hypothetical scenario. Okay, I'm rubbing my lucky coconut right now. Perfect, perfect. Okay, you're in Bali. I understand you spent some time out there when you were yes. younger, and uh, it's early in the day. Okay. Now you're heading out to one of your epic, quote, secret, surf sites okay. that uh, many people don't know about. Ooh. Been out there several times and it's about 25 nautical miles out to the site, this epic secret surf site. We're going in a boat, you mean? So you uh, grab your surfboard, you grab your wetsuit, okay. you grab a one liter aluminum container like you have filled with water and you've got a waterproof VHF radio. So surfboard, wetsuit, your aluminum container with about a liter of water, and a waterproof VHF. You hop into uh, your Zodiac, and you start motoring out by yourself. And um, you're almost to the surf site when you strike something, because as we've just discussed, the ocean is filled with stuff. You've nailed something, it's gashed, put a gash in your Zodiac, and unfortunately, smoke starts coming out of your motor, which turns to flame. Any questions about your situation right now before we get started? So I'm alone. Yes. I'm going out to a surf break in the middle of the ocean. Well, yeah, I'm and you're about 23 okay. miles off the coast when you impacted something. And it, what's the boat made out of? Is it a rubber Zodiac? Yeah, it's, it's a like rubber a little... Zodiac with a little outboard motor. So it's not a fishing boat like a typical Balinese. We're not. No, no, you're you're kind of winging it on this one, and so you're out there on the Zodiac, okay. and again you have a surfboard, you've got a wetsuit, you have uh, one liter of water in an aluminum container, and you have a waterproof VHF. So in other words, if the boat pops, it's sinking because it's 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 a inflatable. Well, that is a bad part, but even worse, you now have a fire 
that has started as a result of this impact. So your motor's on fire and it's spreading quick. Okay. So here's your first decision. You've got a fire, it's starting to engulf your boat. Are you gonna abandon that boat, get out and get in the water, or are you gonna make some kind of an attempt to try and put the fire out? It's pretty aggressive though. Well, I have a, a radio, don't I? You do, but right now your only choice is to get out or try and fight the fire. Well, I mean, if you're in the middle of the ocean, you want all the items you can, I mean, think of Titanic, Jack and Rose. Like okay. you want everything you possibly can have to stay you know, and, afloat and stay out of the ocean. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get to that, but right now you have to pick between A and B. Abandoned. But if I'm surrounded by ocean water, can I just put the fire, like, I can risk bail water onto the fire, correct? You can try, if that's a choice you want to make. Um, I mean, I would, what's my options to put out the fire or to jump overboard and leave the boat? Yeah, so this thing's getting engulfed in flames quick. You can make some type of attempt to try and fight that, or you can go ahead and get into the ocean. I mean, can I get into the ocean and then throw water on the flames? <laughs> you can't play this game that way, I, Allison. That's, that's <laughs> what like, I would do. Can I do both? I know. And that's why I prefaced it with, uh, you know, again, it's a hypothetical survival situation and there could be multiple right answers. But unfortunately, the situation I put you in, you have one of two choices here. Well, if the fire burns everything I have, I'm in trouble. So I need to get away from the fire, um, definitely. But if I lose the boat and the all the, if I have a surfboard, I'm just as good as a popped raft that's gonna sink. So I'd probably get out of the boat. Okay, that is the correct answer given the only two choices that you had. Uh, yeah. You've got a fuel bladder there, the thing's getting engulfed. You gotta have to get away from the immediate yeah, danger. So in that situation, you're getting away from the immediate danger, you're getting in the water. Awesome, plus 10 points. Okay, so you are in the, you're in the water, you see this boat is getting engulfed. You think that you have the opportunity to go back and try and grab three and only three items. Okay. Okay, so you head back. Here is your first choice. And again, you only get three items. Choice number one, do you grab your surfboard or do you grab your water that's in your container? Oh, between the surfboard and the water? Yeah, for right now. Oh, I'd get the water. Okay. Well, the reason well, why, if, if you're thinking I mean, about- I, Oh, it's so, it depends because if you're in the middle of the ocean on a surfboard, I mean, you could try to paddle in well, but that's your decision here. I mean, what is your priority given the situation? A surfboard or a water? Your bottle of water. What do you think is the most important? I mean, if you're floating around in the ocean on a surfboard with no water, you don't have, you can die within a few days. If you're floating around in the ocean with a jug of water, I mean, the only thing the surfboard is going to do is keep you a little lifted out of the elements. But do I have my wetsuit on? So that would be the most thing is if you freeze to death. But well, you're in, a, you're in a bathing suit right now. That's where you're at in the ocean as well. Okay, surfboard or water? What's it gonna be, surfboard or water? Well, water you need to survive. Surfboard you don't need to survive. So I would There's a couple it. ways to look at that. Well, that's okay, you can make a choice and then we can sort of piece it apart. I mean, I could probably paddle back into shore within four days and get water. The thing is, is, is the jug, like, am I gonna, is the jug floaty? Because if I have to hold the jug and tread water, then I'm- Well, I mean, that the one that you have there with you, if it's full of water, it probably is going to, I think the buoyancy on that, with it full of water, is gonna be fairly negative. Come on, Allison, surfboard, I don't know. tick tock. I mean, my tick. instinct would say get water because you need water to survive, but that might not be the right answer for what? Well, let's find out. Which okay. one do you want? Surfboard or water? Oh, Go with water. it. Okay. Um, in survival situations, as you are well aware, I always say address the thing that can kill you first. That ends up being your priority. And so given your situation, 
your number one priority, as simple as this sounds and as good of a swimmer as you are, your number one priority right now is to stay afloat. And so therefore, I would recommend, given the option between drinking water and a surfboard, as you keenly made aware, also keeping you up out of the water to a certain I didn't degree. ask you how big the surfboard is, because the surfboards that I ride, hang on, let's back up. The surfboards that I ride don't keep me out of the water. So I, I know, but they keep you afloat. And right now, uh -huh. that happens to be your number one priority. So I would recommend, let's deal with staying afloat. Again, okay. as basic as that concept sounds, especially because you're 23 nautical miles off the coast. Okay. So I'm going to recommend, given that option, I would go get the surfboard. Okay. Okay. So that's right. okay. That's okay. I mean, I'd never leave my, I'd never leave my pink surfboard. So in reality, <laughs> perfect. Probably... All right. So we're back. We're back at zero, but that's okay. Okay. Again, you get two more options for grabbing gear. Here's option number two for gear. Okay. Are you going to grab that VHF radio? Okay. Or are you going to grab a wetsuit? Oh no. Choices between those two. The VHF radio. It's a little what, handheld water radio. Yeah, yeah. It's it's waterproof. Well, if I'm already on my surfboard, I'll grab the, the radio if I, because I'll be, if it's a bigger surfboard, like you're saying, that I'll be out of the elements more. And that's my only lifeline to people knowing where I am, so. This is true, but you're 23 miles out and a VHF handheld radio has a range of maybe 10 miles, not uh, much. So yeah. what you're dealing, especially because you're in the water so low, so you're looking okay. at maybe a range of 10 miles where what is the next thing you need to think about? You're afloat, well, now what's the next thing? You need to think about retaining heat, hypothermia, and exposure. So in a survival situation, you'd want to have clothing. I mean, you and your number one thing is shelter, is clothing. And that's why originally when you said water or surfboard, I would have gone straight for the wetsuit because- I, I know, but again, this is hypothetical. And I'm yeah. trying, I kind of have to steer you down a path that in the real world, you wouldn't walk down. But for right. this game, since we're playing, for this game, I would highly recommend getting that wetsuit because the next priority yeah, no, after- that's, what, that's funny, I, that, that was my first thing. I know, I was hoping you were gonna go with your instinct on that, because it was correct. No, 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 oh, well, I would pick wetsuit now. I'm just saying my first inclination in the very beginning with everything is wetsuit, always wetsuit, because you have to stay, if you stay warm, that's the key, otherwise you're done. Mm -hmm. Right, so in this particular case, that's why I say, yeah, the radio would be great. But I didn't choose yet. I was just going back and forth between wetsuit and radio. I'll give this one to you. I'll give I'll okay. give you the wetsuit. All right. <laughs> so you're, you're, that's awesome. So you're right back, uh, you're back at plus 10 again. So <laughs> you grabbed, okay, final chance to grab one of these two items. Okay. The water or the radio. Oh no. You're on your surfboard, or you have a surfboard, you have a wetsuit, water or radio, water or radio, what are you gonna choose? I think water. Go with your instincts. I think water. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. because on your priority list, okay, you're a float, yeah. check. Okay, you have something that's gonna keep you warm, wetsuit and help you float, check. Yeah. So what are you working at next? You're looking at exposure or dehydration. Yeah. The radio, it may or may not work. The water will definitely help you out with that. And I always say this, I always say this to my guys in the SEAL teams, and I say it now, if it takes a battery, it's going to take a crap exactly when you need it. So that's go for I, that water. That's why it's so funny when you first said the radio, I don't even know what a VH, like I don't, you know, I don't, I don't use radio. I don't it's just like the little, it's, it's basically yeah. a, a bridge to bridge or it's a small one. So it, a way a VHF radio works is your antenna can yeah. see that antenna, then they in theory should be able to communicate because you're 23 miles out. Yeah. And so that little radio with that little antenna, nice not to ahead. have, but not ahead of floating, not ahead of a wetsuit and not yeah. ahead of water. So you're plus 20. You're awesome. Okay. Decision time. The boat, it's gone. It okay. is melted and it is sunk. So you are sitting on your surfboard with your water jug and yep. with a, a wetsuit. Do you continue to travel toward that surf spot, hoping that maybe somebody else is out there surfing, even though it's your secret spot? Or do you say, I'm heading back towards shore. I got a 23 mile uh, paddle ahead of me. 
back. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna get moving. Oh, I need torch shore happens to be against the current. Well, how far away am I from the surf break? Uh, surf break is about a mile. Your surf spot is about a mile and a half. Popular surf. We know that if it's a secret yeah, but one, then. maybe somebody else on Bali knows about this secret spot too. So, do you say, "Hey, I'm going to try a mile and a half and see if somebody's there," or I'm just going to start heading to shore? And I've got 23 miles ahead of me. What I'd really do in this situation is I would figure out where the boats would be coming from and try to track back to shore along that route of where it would go. But okay, so that know, would be heading towards the coast, heading back to where you came from. Coast. Or you but can if that's really far away, spot. if that's really far away, that's a long freaking way to go with a little jug of water. True. So I would Dirt. probably perish in the process of okay. to do that. So you head into a surf spot? Or back? Towards, let's, let's risk see who's close by. Absolutely. I think that's... Because if you get there, you could always paddle back. You're just adding a mile on to your trip versus... Um, yeah, and, and, and that's the mindset too. It's You have a pretty good chance that somebody else knows about it and they're going to be there or coming out there at the same time. So you nailed it on that one. Absolutely. Head to that surf spot and hopefully somebody's there. All right. So you made it to the surf spot. Okay. You're looking around. Congratulations. It is a secret surf spot because you are all by yourself. And the waves are firing. All right. So here you go, though. Uh, you're confronted with this situation. You're all alone. Are you going to stay put for a little while? Uh, see if somebody comes along? Or are you going to be like, you know what? I'm going to start. I'm going to start heading back toward the coast uh, about 25 miles. L-O-N-P-S. The current is against you if you're heading back to the coast. So stay put. See if somebody shows up. It's hot out. Middle of the day or... I'm just going to go ahead and start doing this. Well, ooh, there's so many variables in that. What time of day are we at? Um, You're about noon right now, so it's pretty toasty. So you stay put. Maybe somebody comes out. Maybe they don't. Or you say, well, all right, this sucks. Time to head back to where I came from because I know where Bali is. My instinct is, though, is that if you exert yourself, you're just going to die in the middle of somewhere, whereas at least, you know, somebody might come there. Or they, because nobody will know where to find you if you're in the middle of, of nowhere trying to get back to. Yeah, but what if you're sitting in the middle of nowhere? But, for I was going to say, but if several, you're sitting up there in yeah. the middle of nowhere overnight, a shark's going to potentially come in. Oh, we're, I mean, oh, we're getting there. <laughs> I feel like where I would, what I would honestly do is if I knew the oceans enough, I would, like I said, I would try to start tracking back towards the island in the direction of like where a fishing route would go or where people would come out for that. Because if they're gonna come to that, they're gonna cross me. Then um, let's go with that. Let's go with that. So I would start heading back along a direction, you know, follow a reef, mm -hmm. follow a certain, but I can't see anything. Yeah, I'll go back, I'll go back. Excellent, and I think that's the right choice and here's the reason why. There's a, couple, there's a philosophical answer for it. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna do it trying my damnedest yeah. to, to stay alive. So yeah. that concept of sitting around and letting the ocean's current just send me where I want to go is not going to improve my situation. Just Unless keep my finger, different. yeah, keep my fingers crossed and saying, I hope a fishing boat comes out here. I, I just, I'm not going to do that. Right. But then you have to be mindful of the energy that you're exerting in an attempt to stay alive. And so it, it's a little bit of both. And that's why I say, personally, I'm going to fight like hell to try and get out alive. So I'm heading. I'm heading back to Bali. Well, and so that gives you another 10 points, by the way, plus 40. Well, and an interesting side note, I mean, just that's why this is such a trippy, it kind of hits heart and home for me, this one, because we have, you've heard of the, the term Eddie would go. It's like the mm -hmm. bumper stickers. The Absolutely. Eddie. And, and you know, the reason that he died is because he did jump off a boat and try to swim to shore for help in a situation. And that wasn't really the right call. So like you said, I know it's a game and there can be rights or wrongs, but that's definitely a risk too, to try to swim from the middle of the ocean back to an Well, I like that you're, you're in your head though. I mean, you're thinking it through. And, and again, it is a game, it's hypothetical and we like to have fun with, and that's why it's a point system, but you are, you're grinding through, I can see it. You're like, mm -hmm, that and this. So we're gonna continue on to your next option here. Okay, okay. you're starting to stroke back. Okay. You come across an old sail from a sailboat. It's probably about 
about 15 feet of fabric in a triangle. And you're like, huh. Now, you're already battling against the current. Do you grab that cell and try and drag it or put it on your board, or you just leave it? Say so it's just, unfortunately, more, more junk in the ocean. We'll address that later. You grab the cell, it's like a faded orange, or you're just gonna- Well, is there it. wind to, to um, pull? I mean, if I made a sail, would it do I anything? Or am I just- it's Old, old ratty cell, it's a faded orange ratty cell. And you're asking yourself, well, is this something I can use? Or is this just gonna create my trip? Is it gonna make it that much harder? Because the weight, dragging it, what have you. Take it, leave it. I mean, it's so, yeah, if it's something I can hook up easy and try to make a sail out of, but if there's no wind, then I'm just dragging a dog. Maybe the wind will come later. Maybe it yeah. won't. Maybe it's going to be burning twice as many calories. Maybe it won't. I don't know. It's an opportunity. I mean, in my life, I've always taken up, like, it's, you always want something that could actually help you if you're in that kind of a crazy situation. Will it help you more than hurt you? I feel like that's it's, that's the I, million dollar question I, here or the 10 point question. Well, if you don't try it, you don't know. Yes. So you grab it and you take it because it could it, it has the opportunity for multiple. Users. Right. You're another couple hours in the pal. And guess what you see? Oh, crap. Yeah. And it happened. Boom. He bumps you. You go flying off your surfboard he proceeds to turn your surfboard into a bunch of little coffee cups. <laughs> uh -oh. you know, so he goes to town on your surfboard, uh -oh. you're swimming off, you, you've got some range, he seems more interested in the surfboard, and so you're sitting there watching this happen, and all that's left when he decides to leave is a piece of your surfboard that's maybe about the size of a laptop. Okay. So, what do you do? Do you head back and try and recover that smaller piece of surfboard or in the opposite direction is your wetsuits and the cell and the water that are kind of miraculously sort of hung together. But you only get to go one way or the other. You're a little concerned about the shark coming back. And unfortunately you can either recover a piece of your surfboard. Well, like you said, you, can... you need flotation though. Otherwise, I mean, a wetsuit is right. heavy. Um, you so stay you warm. A piece of surfboard or wetsuit, water, and that chunk of sail that you found. Are any of those floaty? They, they're all together. They somehow have stayed together. You were smart enough to wrap your wetsuit and put your container, put your container of water oh. inside your wetsuit. So it's over there and just floating around with that old piece of sail, or you can go and try and recover the piece of surfboard, but you only get to do one because mysteriously, the they're, drift, they're drifting away from each other. You probably want the three items because that's way more, you can do way more with that if it's just a tiny little piece. I think you're absolutely right and go with your gut. Yeah. Absolutely. What does a wetsuit offer other than, uh, you know, obviously it's gonna help you stay warm, but it also is gonna give you buoyancy. Right. So yeah, it's important to stay afloat. Yeah. You put that wetsuit on, you nailed multiple uses. It'll help me float, it'll, it'll protect me from hypothermia, I'm going to go for that wetsuit. It's not ideal to be in the water, but that's a better option than maybe a piece of surfboard. Right. Plus, you got to think a little longer term now. I'm going to need that water. I know right. I am. So that's another 10 plus 60 points. Here we go. Just two left. Ready? All right. Sun is setting. Uh, you're pretty spent. And um, you can do one of two things. You can put the wetsuit on. Okay or you can wrap yourself in that piece of cell that you have. Why would I not put the wetsuit on? I know, this was this is a gimme. This is, I put a gimme on each one for the people that are oh. just absolutely doing oh. terrible. It makes them feel a little better. So yes, <laughs> you're gonna put that like, wetsuit on. Is this a no. trick question? <laughs> no, this is for the people that are like, oh, I'm minus 60, I really suck. And so I give them a little softball. So that's your softball, absolutely. 
you know, get I that wetsuit on. Is there a redemption? Is there a bonus question? This isn't fair. <laughs> no, <laughs> put the know? wetsuit on. Here's here's something that a lot of people actually don't realize about hypothermia. When you're in the water, that water, even if it's 84 degrees, you're losing one degree of body temperature, core temperature an hour, even yeah. in something that feels like a hot bath. Yep. So absolutely get that wetsuit on and uh, it's gonna help you float. It's gonna conserve some of your energy. And most importantly, given the fact that the sun's going down, it's gonna keep you warmer. Yeah. So what here we go. Sun's going down and you hear in the distance a motor. You don't know what it is, but you hear a motor. It's not a plane, it's not, it's probably a fishing boat. So okay. you have, you have a, here's your final choice. Signal using your silver water bottle container to try and ref, create reflection from a sun that's setting or try and spread out that sail, that faded orange sail, to see if they can see that. I do both. <laughs> mm, you could in the real world, but in hypothetical survival world, you only get to choose one. Well, if I don't know if it's a boat or a plane, a boat's not gonna see my sail, then I'd have to, I, I mean, I've never really had a water bottle work to reflect, but okay, hypothetically, yes, I guess. Yeah, there you go, and, and that would be it, and you nailed it. it. You know, you could be in the ocean, you can be 10 feet away from somebody and not even see them. Right. So based on the fact that you have such a low profile, let's do everything we can to create, while we still have some last light, and create a reflection. So. Awesome, Till, you knocked it out with a plus 70, if I, my math is right here. No, I'm sorry, you're plus 80. That's great, that's really good. Plus I mean, 80? How many did I miss? Well, you missed, so you started at a plus 10. One. So you missed one, and so you were zero, and then you needed to come back, so that's why it's a plus 80. Oh, so you want plus 10 to zero, back to a plus 10. 80 is, 80 is awesome. We need to go ahead and call Discovery Channel and tell them to get you into a hypothetical world. <laughs> I'm just so glad you didn't give me the same thing you gave Steve-O with like, uh, if I'm in a hostage situation with a gun. I was listening to that. I was like, oh boy. Oh this, yeah. This, this would be tough. I mean, well, I wanted to put you in your wheelhouse. You got the surfboard. And I figured, all right, why not? But you handled it awesome. You did a great job. Thanks for playing. I really appreciate it. And um, look, let's go ahead again. Um, your book coming out, Allison's Adventures, Your Passport to the World. Folks, you can get it now or you can pre-order for a printed version. Is there anything you want to you wanna leave with us in something we call an after action report? Is there something maybe that you learned or something, just a final thing that you want to tell the folks that are listening? Yes. If that ever happens to me, am I allowed to bring you with me? Because I think... <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back? Is there a question where I get to bring you on the uh, phone? Yeah, well, I, I guarantee you I'll, I will hold my way. I will, I will, <laughs> I will help out. I won't, uh, I won't be worth, Actually, worth forget that. For then I'd have to share the water. Never mind. Let's, oh. let's <laughs> Only if you bring chocolate. Um, no, you know, it's really sweet. I, I just, I wanted to acknowledge you for doing this. It's fun to, you know, have a different vein of a, of a podcast. And I think during these times, this is really important. I can't tell you like, you know, we were laughing about the toilet paper, how many calls I got in the beginning, you know, of this pandemic being like, what if this happens? What do I do? And, you know, again, you come from maybe more of a trained background in this realm. And I come from just an experiential living like a Tarzan child um, in that way. And so I think right now, it's really important for people to hear things like this. And it's fun that it's done in like a game way. And maybe we're not going to all end up in the middle of the ocean with sharks or, you know, handcuffed in in some crazy terrorist situation but um it's important to learn that and through if we can't all get this experiential education at least we can listen to something like this and really dive in um so that we pass on that information because in the olden times right it wasn't survival it was just normal this kind of stuff would happen all the time with fishermen with people who were um in situations and so uh, right now we call it survival, but you know I think it's life, and so I I honor what you're doing, and I think that it's it's really incredible for people to learn, even if it's just you know in tidbits what they can take away uh, from this. So well, I appreciate it. Come visit me here. In I would love to. No, I appreciate. It. Thank you so much, Allison. Yeah, basically, the whole reason why we're doing this is we're trying to educate, we're trying to entertain, and at the end of the day, end of the day, we're trying to save lives. So if we can do it in this way and maybe it helps somebody out, that's awesome. Thank you again, Allison Till. This is Cade, out. Aloha. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed the show, go ahead and smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. 
Any questions or suggestions for future episodes, leave it in the comments so you can be a survivor, not a statistic. And if you want more from this guest, including an amazing interview, you can find us on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform. Can You Survive This Podcast is a Cavalry Audio production recorded live from the bunker in Denver, Colorado. Hosted by me, Kate Courtley. Produced by Brandon Morgan and Kate Courtley. Associate producer is Jeff Apple. Executive produced by Keegan Rosenberger and Dana Brunetti. Service, commitment, and integrity are the traits embodied by our nation's defenders, veterans, and first responders, and they are also the core values upon which the Gary Sinise Foundation is built. The Gary Sinise Foundation serves and honors our nation's defenders, veterans, first responders, their families, and those in need. Whether the Gary Sinise Foundation is providing specially adapted smart homes to severely wounded heroes, supporting Gold Star families, or providing essential equipment, training, and PPE to first responders, in all of the Foundation's programs, they honor those who so bravely defend our freedoms every day. Support our heroes today at GarySiniseFoundation.org.